All right. There is another notion as so I mean that is built on this conditional expectation. It is a concept called iterative expectation which is again useful for theoretical analysis more than anything and this is the idea of iterative expectation. So, if you look at the conditional expectation what we are doing is we are anchoring x onto some value or within the vicinity of some value and evaluating the expectation. So, if you go back to uh, this two dimensional plane that we have here x and y. Let us say for the purpose of illustration we have anchored x here and we are evaluating the expectation along this direction here right. Now, many a times I am interested in the at least the I would say unconditional expectation the strict word would be the marginal expectation, but let us assume that only x and uh, x is only dependent on y at the most and or y is dependent only on x there is no other factor. So, we will use the term unconditional expectation. So, suppose I want to find out the unconditional expectation of y. How do I do that? Well, <coughs> from the joint density I evaluate the marginal density of y and then calculate the uh, unconditional expectation that is a standard route. But suppose I know the conditional expectation of y given x can I use that to calculate the unconditional expectation and the result that you see there or the uh, so called expression or uh, the identity that you see there is uh, can be intuitively understood this way. You have two layers of expectations there one expectation which is the inner one is being <coughs> evaluated in the outcome space of y correct. So, that means I have walked along this direction at a given value of x what I need is the unconditional expectation of y which means regardless of the values that x takes which means that I have to be able to evaluate uh, al along the entire 2D plane at this I in this case I only walked along one dimension, but located at x. So, now the next step is to walk along the other dimension and that is what the outer expectation is doing it is being evaluated in the spa outcome space of x. You can also look at it this way the inner expectation is a function of x right. So, you are going to evaluate expectation of g of x that is what it is and eventually you will get the unconditional uh, expectation uh, of y and likewise unconditional expectation of uh, x. So, uh, that is uh, that this iterative expectation is actually used in many in proving many results we do not use it in practice in any data analysis. So, this result is something that is of purely of theoretical interest I should say all right. We will move on we will see the use of this uh, result uh, later on. Now, let us understand this notion of independence it is also very timely we have independence day around the corner. So, uh, and it is perfect timing all the time because time series analysis is offered in the odd semester. Uh, this notion of independence always comes up before the independence day. Uh, so, we talked about this concept earlier in fact, uh, some of you have answered this correctly also that when the conditional density works out to be the same as the marginal density, then we say that the two events are independent that is one way of defining. So, you look at it this way here f x of x given y is the same as f x of x ok. So, when when this is equal we say they are independent that means does not matter what has occurred in the uh, y domain the marginal density remains unperturbed. And you can write this result in many uh, at least in two different ways one way is what you see on the slide that the joint density now can be factorized into the product of the individual uh, marginal densities right and that is clear even from this definition or from here you can actually replace this with the marginal density and you get the result or the other way of stating independence is as we have written here the, the conditional density is the same as the marginal density whichever way you write it is ok. <coughs> what this also implies 
is that the conditional expectation is the same as unconditional expectation. Clearly, look at it this here. If suppose uh, suppose y and x are independent, then the conditional density is the same as marginal density, right? So, when you replace this with the marginal density, you get your unconditional expectation. The PDF is the super boss always, then comes your expectation and then comes your notion of covariance uh, in that order and we will understand that in today's lecture and in the lecture on Tuesday as well that this is the order of hierarchy. Independence is the strongest inference that you can draw. If two events are independent, they are uncorrelated, their conditional expectations are uh, uh, identical to the unconditional, all the things because whether you look at expectations or whether you look at covariances, they are all derived as moments of PDFs. If PDFs themselves satisfy a certain relation, then you should expect the moments also to satisfy, it, I mean at least intuitively, the moments also to satisfy or enjoy certain properties, not the other way around, okay. Covariance is an inference on a second order moment only. Very, very often I see uh, not only students but many uh, researchers even in conferences, public forums using independence and uh, uncorrelatedness interchangeably. Unfortunately, that is not correct. Maybe from a dictionary sense you can perhaps, but in a statistical sense independence is the strongest statement that you can make about the relation between x and y. In fact, if x and y are independent, there is no model that you can build for y using x. That means it does not matter whether you give me x or not, the prediction of y is unaltered. Whereas uncorrelatedness as we will see today in the next lecture only makes statements about the absence of linearity or presence of it, that is all. So independence rules out any relation between y and x, I mean it cannot be like as I always say it cannot be like uncles, cousins, aunts, daughter, nothing, no relation. Absolutely these are two different events that are uh, happening. It is a very strong statement whereas we say you know two human beings are related at some, at, at some level they are related. Uncorrelatedness rules out immediate relation. Maybe you know they are not in your family or in your next uh, first cousin and so on, that is about it stops at that. Whereas independence rules out any kind of relation. So let us briefly talk about covariance and then we will continue our discussion in the next class, do not close your books yet. Uh, this is just to wake you up, sometimes students are waiting for the class to get over. I do not know somehow, I mean even as a student, I, I used to be unattentive but the moment I hear somehow that word, it triggers a nice thing in your brains that yeah, coming to a close, yes, then you are alert. So, sometimes we can use that as a weapon to wake up, right. So the, uh, as I said, independence is a, makes a very strong statement about the relationship between y and x. Now we are interested, we have said already we are going to build linear models. So we would like to know even before we build a linear model whether there exists a linear relationship. And covariance is that one tool which gives you a, a, a very good assessment of the presence of linear relationship between any two random variables. Now we are doing all of this for the random signals, whether it, uh, particularly this covariance concept and so on or the linear relations so on. A similar set of theory exists for deterministic world as well, but we will not talk about it at this moment. When the time comes, we will talk about it. So the covariance is defined as the second moment, like we define variance as a second moment of the individual density functions. Covariance is the second central moment of the joint PDF as you see on the slide. And of course you can rewrite the covariance as expectation of xy which is the second moment, not second central moment minus the product of the first, uh, first order moments, all right, or first moments you can say. And often this other relation that is sigma xy being expectation of xy minus the product is quite useful in making uh, certain statements or even in calculations. So this is the uh, expression for covariance. Once again you, you may think you know I need to know the joint PDF and so on. Yes, for theory you need when we 
uh, go to estimation, we will give an expression there, we will come across several ways of estimating covariance, we will talk about that at that point in time, but let us come back to this here. We said independence is f of when, when f of x comma y is simply f of x times f of y. So, we will keep that in mind. Now, let us look at uncorrelatedness. So, this is what is independence. I mean, as I said strictly speaking, you need to have the marginals there. Suppose x and y are uncorrelated. We have not introduced correlation, but you can think of correlation as a standardized measure. You must have already sat through the lectures. Two variables are uncorrelated if the covariance between them is 0. Remember, covariance implicitly has that name co-varying. We, we are measuring whether x and y, the variation in x and y, the spread in x and y are related. If x moves uh, in this way, is it affecting y and vice versa. So, two variables are uncorrelated when the covariance is 0. In other words, the expectation of the product is the same as the product of expectations. Okay. Independence says the joint density is a product of the individual or the marginal densities, whereas uncorrelatedness is essentially <coughs> saying that the prod expectation of the product is a product of expectations. Now, you can see straight away that independence implies uncorrelatedness and not necessarily the other way around. Because if you look at expectation of x, y, what would be the theoretical definition of expectation of uh, x, y, x times y? It is int double integral x times y times the joint density dx dy, right. You can, if they are independent, then you can bring in this relation and factorize the double integral into a product of single integrals and then prove that the expectation of the product is a product of the expectations. But the other way need not be true and that is what we mean by uncorrelatedness not implying independence. So, independence rules out all nonlinear relation, any relation of course, that means linear also, whereas uncorrelatedness actually rules out only linear relations. We have not proved that, we have not seen that yet as to how lack of correlation or lack of covariance means that there is no linear relation, all right. That we will have to talk about correlation and then we will also have to talk, we will talk about partial correlation and so on. But this is something to keep in mind and we will leave uh, this class with an important point. Independence would mean that the conditional expectations, let me write this here. For example, you can write this and likewise for x as well and this and then <coughs> you could uh, also have here uncorrelatedness. All right, but not the other way around. So, independence implies everything uh, that the conditional expectation is the same as uh, unconditional expectation that the variables are uncorrelated, but not the other way around. Okay. So, we will uh, <coughs> uh, we'll begin the next class with just a brief uh, disposition on this, exposition on this.